Thank you. My name is Bernhard Lesche. Uh, in your uh, experiments with white dwarf, your atomic species are exposed to quite a huge electromagnetic uh, environment, the radiation that comes from the star. So you should expect some kind of AC star shift of your spectral lines. I and also in your data with asteroids, you probably will have difficulties with uh, stark effects or something like that. You, you probably have some residual magnetic fields around. So I find it rather uh, difficult to rely on experiments near a uh, astronomical objects, near stars or uh, uh, other kind of things around makes yep. things much more complicated. Uh, yeah, so I, I would guess that your uh, quasi data are much more reliable than the rest. Yeah, so, well, when we started looking at the quasar data, we calculated the impact of those things for pretty broad range of magnetic field strengths, for example, and we were I actually can't remember the numbers, but it was something like 12 orders of magnitude out for the quasar data. Now, uh, Simon Preval had his hand up behind you. He wants to comment, I think. Is that right? Yeah. You, you want to comment on this. So let me, yeah. Um, if, I, if I would explain, um, the stark, stark shift does have an effect on certain lines in white dwarfs, but they tend to um, happen for low Z um, ions, so for things like hydrogen, helium, and carbon. When it comes to iron, um, they're a lot more resilient to magnetic and, um, electric, and electric fields. So um, that's why you don't observe this sort of fuzziness in the energy levels. So if you don't tend to see a stark shift of iron and nickel. Um, Anthony Lazenby. So um, I didn't quite understand quite how much you think the quasar results could now be affected by what you're finding from the asteroids. So should we take it that actually all of those results are in suspension until you've sorted that out? Yes, that's a nasty question. <laughs> Obviously, I've thought about that quite a lot. Um, we are going to need, you know, remember what the quasar data seem to be uh, implying is a spatial effect. So, uh, and you might, you might remember that I put up a slide with a number of apparent coincidences on it. So, for example, I just remind you, uh, when you split the sample up by telescope uh, and, and fit a dipole, you get a, di a consistent direction. Not at a high significance level, but you at least get a consistent direction. When you split it up in redshift, uh, there, and so such that you're using different atomic transitions in each, you get a consistent direction. And there were a few other things, right? Now, what, it, what that means is that you would have to have uh, two systematic effects, at least, which were such that you had the same magnitude of effect uh, in terms of the magnitude of delta alpha over alpha in each of the samples and the same directionality somehow imposed upon them. Now, look, it's possible that, that nature is being very unkind here. I don't know the answer to your question. I don't, I, for me, I think to say that it's in suspension, you know, of course, it's, it, it's, it's like, for me, it's in constant suspension. Um, you know, I, I, I don't present this as a, as a, a detection. Uh, you know, I present it as, a, as a, an interesting result from data that means that an awful lot more has got to be done. Do I feel that, that, that what's been found with the, with the uh, long-range wavelength distortion instantly kind of kills that, those results? Definitely not, because it's it, it going to have to be very, very um, finely tuned to, to reproduce the data. It's possible that that might happen. I don't know. One thing that we're just, just doing at the moment uh, with a, one of my PhD students, we're just simply going to take a, a, well, actually, we're going to work backwards. We're going to take both samples of data and ask what functional forms of the distortion, distortion patterns in each do we need to, um, to, to emulate the dipole, and then we'll obviously compare those functional forms with the, with the asteroid measurements. We haven't done that yet, but, but that we will have that done you know, on a shortish time scale this year. But uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I think I was just basically after whether the magnitude of the effects could be such that if they conspired against you, they could be reproducing what you see. And it sounds as though they could, but it would be a sort of conspiracy yeah, type thing. Yeah, that's right. I think that's right. The magnitude is about right, but you'd need a conspiracy as well. Yeah. John Barrow, um, 
John, it was implicit several times in what you were saying, particularly at the end, that um, people generally think all the uncertainties are in the astronomy in this business, but one of the problems uh, is getting very accurate uh, laboratory measurements of all the lines that one would want to, to use. And um, in the last case, I mean, one problem with the nickel and the iron uh, were these rather old laboratory observations. Uh, there's no motivation for people in the past to have made those particular observations. Um, what are the prospects, uh, if any, of getting contemporary mm. re-measurements? I mean, they yeah. weren't good when we first worked on this, but no. has there been any no. progress? It, they're not good. Um, people don't seem to be laboratory. Uh, people don't seem to either have the equipment or the money or the motivation to do it. Uh, probably the motivation is there, but I think these highly ionized lines are actually quite hard. Um, and uh, so with, even though there's some you know, beautiful laboratory apparatus around, uh, the people, as you know, that, that we spoke to very quickly um, said, don't think we can do any better than was done in the mid 70s. And I think that's the, that's the status. I mean, I emailed, I, I tried to make contact with all the laboratories that I knew about that had equipment that could do this. And, I didn't even get responses from a couple. So, you know, it's a, you can have a go. <laughs> yes, usually they've been closed down a few weeks <laughs> before by the Research Council. 